All rise. This is Deeper Than Money. Talk to me. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchett is compelling. If he is not going to honor you, he needs to be gone. Compassionate. I don't want you to give up on your dreams. I don't. And I want to figure out how we get this straight. She's powerful. If I were in this situation, I would have put you out too. And she's on the bench. I feel like I'm being judged here. <laughs> That's what I do. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Emily Armstrong is suing Jackie Serafian in the amount of $1,900. Ms. Armstrong claims the defendant carelessly shattered dozens of vintage champagne flutes at a wedding shower and says Ms. Serafian should pay up. Waterford Crystal Vintage Champagne Flutes. You all were neighbors and had a long relationship. I understand your two daughters are best friends. So why is it necessary for you to be in here suing her this morning? Because out of complete neglect and responsibility, she shattered 24 of family vintage passed down from my grandmother, great-grandmother uh, to me and my mother, and I wanted to pass them down to my daughter, who I would hope would pass them down to her daughter, which so is a family tradition. So let me be clear. We're talking about how many crystal champagne flutes? How many? 24. 24. So there was a set of 24. Do you have evidence, uh, pictures of these? Well, I have the picture of the original. Judge, she makes it sound like this was on purpose. This, this was a complete accident. All right, so let's back up. What was the occasion? What was the occasion? It was my daughter's bridal shower. Bridal shower. And I had offered to give her, give her the bridal And so you gave the bridal yeah. shower. This mm -hmm. is at your home. Yes. And let's back up. You all know each other because your daughters grew up together as close friends. We've been close friends. And so tell me about the relationship that you've had before you all end up on opposite ends of my courtroom today. So tell me about the relationship. Well, our daughters were inseparable from the very get-go, from grade school. Mm -hmm. Jackie and I were cordial, not friends, and I tolerated her because my daughter was so close with her daughter. So when you say tolerate, that means that there's some kind of backstory mm -hmm. here. You know, I mean, when people say I tolerate somebody, that means that there was some kind of backstory. Tell me what was going on between the two of you. Because she disagrees. I mean, she's sitting this here is, like. This, this is piercing my heart. So oh. you, I, I love this woman, and I love her oh daughter, God. and we've always been close. She's delusional. And this is a very delusional. different <laughs> delusional. I mean, both of you well, are standing here with complete opposite stories she, about the relationship. You're she, saying that you were very close we friends. We were very close. That is yes. piercing your heart mm -hmm. that she would describe it as just cordial. And, and, and I just want us all to get along and be in agreement, and that's why I offered to do the shower for oh, her please. daughter at my home, at my expense. I spent much more than the cost of those glasses. I spent more than $5,000 on, on all of the, 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 uh, the stuff that we needed. We needed tables, we needed chairs, we needed uh, umbrellas. It's a, it, as I you can spent see, it's so a, it's, much money you can on see her child how beautiful through all it, the it years. Ended up looking. It, it, so, it was so beautiful. I, I did all the colors that her, her daughter asked me for. I did yellow and white because those were the colors she requested. So I had to special order those linens. And these are the things you do oh, when you throw a, These are the things you do when you throw a party. She had never done that before, so she obviously felt like she was doing something extraordinary. Well, wait a minute, though. Come on. Emily, we have a situation where your daughter's getting married, there's a bridal shower, 
And it looks to me from these pictures that this was a very elaborate shower. I'm assuming this is your beautiful backyard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that you picked up the entire cost the entire of this cost. shower. And, and, and she added uh, about two-thirds more guests than we had had. So there were meals for uh, 70 people that I hadn't taken into consideration. Wow. My and those daughter meals and were her daughter insisted and it be in her backyard. And of course, I went along with that because I will do anything for my daughter. I want her to have everything. She lost her father a year ago, suddenly. Oh, and so, so sorry. I, I wanted her to give her what she wanted in spite of the nightmare this has been for me. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. And so when Emily showed up with these glasses, mm. and then Flutes, she just kind of- Champagne flutes. Stop being a snob. Stop being a snob. And later, there were other people, men and women, you know, praising and worshiping, and I got knocked into, which meant I knocked into her. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Emily Armstrong, who is suing Jackie Serafian for property damage. So we're here today over these broken flutes, these Waterford flutes. Um, they were heirlooms, your great-grandmother gave them to your mother, your I mother then gave them to you. I can't put a monetary value on them. They're very special to me. They were given to my grandmother and then my mother and then myself on our wedding day. Yeah. We all toasted on our wedding nights with our husbands. I wanted to give my daughter something of her father who was not going to be able to walk her down the aisle. So they mean a lot to me. And for her to say it's nothing, I mean, I did not want to come to court. I wrote, I just, I sent her a text that said, you know, I just sent you uh, a picture, I have them here, of these glasses. Like I say, I can't put monetary values on mine. The memories are shattered, literally. And, the, and they're vintage, so you can't typically replace no, them. No, but that's fine. I'm willing, if I still want to give my daughter something that resembles this family tradition and that she's very aware of how these Right. Flutes have come down. So very succinctly, Jackie, because I do need to then rule on this case. How did the she refuses get broken? Oh, Your Honor, it was a matter of uh, you know had all the setup. You can see how lovely it was, and I especially picked those uh, those uh, flowers for the their in the vases. They're um, they really it lots. really yes, and really I put is all beautiful. Those together and, and I mean, this looks more like a wedding reception it, than it, it does a bridal shower. It was really beautiful. And I mean, I've given yeah, some bridal right. showers, boy. They've not ever been this elaborate. It, I mean, that's really, really lovely. Really lovely, and I, I was so happy to do it, and I was so proud, too, to get it all done by 11 o'clock that morning. And so when Emily showed up with these glasses, mm. and then flutes, she just kind of... champagne flutes. Stop being a snob. Stop being a snob. Okay. She says glasses. Come on. Champagne flutes, glasses. Let her tell what happened. Okay. You're being a snob. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. She, she put them on the, the, a very prominent place on all the table setting where it happened to be near the champagne, champagne buckets, and her daughter, Emma, had asked me when she gave me these, she said, she gave me these crystals, and she said, would you be the one that opens the champagne for us, and for so the toast. I was totally honored to do that. And I was opening up the champagne, and and I don't have a whole lot of luck with doing that. I, I have a little bit of arthritis, and so oh. when it popped off, inadvertently it must have hit into some of the glasses that Emily had shoved so close to you everything right the court, there. Right I at didn't, the beverage bar where the oh, glasses were. How could you think do you really I would think aim that she that? aimed them intentionally mm -hmm. to break these glasses? I mean, honestly. Look, I mean, honestly, she has taken advantage of me for years. I'm not saying she did it on purpose, but that was really irresponsible. And if she would have just considered what these meant to me or could mean to me or asked me at all anything about my daughter's shower, she 
cast me aside once I, she decided to throw it. I'm going to rule on this it. case, but this is what I'm going to do. I think that Jackie graciously opened up her home. Looks to me that she, and I see some of these invoices, she spent a lot of money on this. My sense of it is it wasn't even about the money so much as she wanted it to be absolutely so magnificent for your daughter. Because of the love that she has for your daughter, well, also because of the relationship that the two girls have had over the years. She didn't have to do this. She didn't have to say, oh, please, I will be honored to do this. If I thought for a second that there was a malicious bone in her body, that somehow she was being, you know, careless and just totally irresponsible and this cork flew over and somehow she was pointing in that direction, I would see this differently. I don't see it that way. What I see is a woman who was trying to do what she thought was special for your daughter. And what I see in you is a very ungrateful and snobbish woman. I am sorry that these flutes were broken. I understand. I literally have that I gave to my niece. She's the oldest grandchild. I gave to my niece my mother's wedding crystal. So I get tradition, I understand tradition, but I also understand that these are things that really ought not supersede the concern for people. And so therefore, I am not giving you any money in this courtroom. I think you owe Jackie an enormous apology. And I think that if you opened your eyes and if you were not so rigid and not, and not be in a place where you just were tolerating her, that you might find that her friendship, in fact, would be a gift in your life. For the reasons I have stated here, I am dismissing the plaintiff's case. We will stand adjourned. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case has been dismissed. I mean, we just, we were able to resolve everything and the judge was very loving and, and kind <laughs> to us. And I'm done here. Coming up. I proceeded to my left to the aisle and I kneeled down to pray. Uh, in the midst of me praying, I felt a, something crash into me and it was Miss Lucy here. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Maple Flowers is suing Lucy Fields in the amount of $500. Ms. Flowers claims the defendant was out of control at a religious revival and says her finger was broken when Ms. Fields knocked her down. Hi, right, you're suing the defendant for some $500? You're saying that it was caused by injury to you that these damages resulted? because she injured you, is that correct? That's correct, Do Your you Honor. know the defendant? Yes, I do. All right, so Ms. Flowers, you're suing Ms. Fields and you all know each other. How do you know each other? Uh, for the last three years, the uh, New Beginnings Revival comes to Louisiana okay. and we met the first time, so every time it comes, we end up running into each other. Okay. And apparently, it seems like, literally, she says, I ran into her. Well, well, she was praying in the aisle, so. Well, let's start at the top of this. What happened? She, I'm praying in the, I couldn't pray in front of me. It wasn't enough room for me to kneel down. So I proceeded to my left, to the aisle, and I kneeled down to pray. Uh, in the midst of me praying, I felt a, something crash into me, and it was Miss Lucy here. Well, why uh, would she crash into you? She was in the Holy Ghost, feeling the Holy Ghost. And she was jumping up and down and running, not walking, but running. In the aisle? Yes. Coming up. And so everybody's standing up, and once the Spirit caught me, oh yeah, I was feeling it. I was moving with the Spirit, moving with God.
You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Maple Flowers, who is suing Lucy Fields for personal injury. So, Ms. Fields, what happened? Tell me what happened from your perspective. Well, when you go to a revival, and especially if it's a pop-up tent revival, it's usually about maybe 200 or a little more. And so everybody's standing up, and once the spirit caught me, oh yeah, I was feeling it. I was moving with the spirit, moving with God. And not only was I ran into her, but because she was in the aisle, so she was in the aisle kneeling? Yes. Uh, in the aisle, and she says that she was there because there wasn't enough room to kneel in front of her seat. Is that what I'm understanding? Correct. Yes. All right, Ms. Flowers, and then what happened? So as um, the music's going and the spirit is flowing, there were other people, men and women, you know, praising and worshiping, and I got knocked into, which meant I knocked into her. So I tried to help her up, assist her, and she didn't want no assistance from me. I even offered to take her to the urgent care. Mm -mm. Did she offer to take you to the urgent care? I don't remember that, because she knocked me unconscious almost. Well, was... either you were conscious she... or you weren't. What were your injuries, Ms. Flowers? How were you injured? My pinky finger. It'll never be the same because of this woman right here. So, really? You see that? It's bro it was broken? Yes, ma'am. And what did they yes. diagnose when you got to the ER? What did they say was wrong? So at first they said it was sprung, and then when they got the x-ray, it was broken. So let me see, do you have receipts of, the, of any evidence that you got medical attention? Yes, Your Honor. May I see those, please? Your Honor, mm -hmm. she was in the aisle. Who does that? Well, apparently you were in the aisle, too. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Let me ask you this, Ms. Fields. In the spirit, in the spirit of coming together in sisterhood and love, okay. do you feel some responsibility? I mean, why not just split it? I mean, she was in the aisle. I don't think that you did this purposely. I don't think you did it, you know, with any malice. I think that you probably didn't see her. I didn't see her, yeah. ma'am. And um, you, were, you were filled with the spirit. You also said that someone knocked you, knocked into me. you and then that knocked you over. Yeah, I head. tripped over Miss Maple with, you know, and yes, I had to get up and I got up quickly and I turned around and I said, uh, can I help you up? Uh, do you need to be taken to urgent care? I did say that. And I believe you, I believe you. May we work this out just to split this? I think that that is the fair thing to do. I don't think for a minute that she ever, ever intended to hurt you. And I don't think that, and really I shouldn't give you any money, but I just want to try to have this in a way that you all will continue to see each other. So therefore, I am going to enter judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $250, and I wish you both well. If there's nothing further, we'll stand adjourned. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $250. She was hauling tail, honey. And I, I and know, you know I, what? You know, she, can made I, can the, I talk? she made the correct verdict. No, you, you okay, did lady. all the talking. Okay, let's take to the rear of the court. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.